So um, why m is irrelevant? I do have a master's degree in math, but the problem's too easy to require you to know a lot of math. Any person with a calculator can figure this out for themselves. So I want to start the video with some good news. The good news is, well, it's not really good news, but the number of deaths today, supposedly, the data has taken off the internet is 61,361 in the United States. The United States population is 327,167,434. If you divide the number of deaths by the U.S. population and you take a ratio, what you find out is that there is one death for every 5,000 people. So out of 5,000 people, only one dies of the COVID virus. Now, you might not be impressed or you might be very impressed. You should know that this is a lie. This is a lie because it does not apply equally to all numbers. So you see, I did math, but it's an illusion. Because if I was to take out the New York and New Jersey deaths, the ratio would be different. So this number of deaths to number of people is for the entire U.S., but this ratio would be lower for New York, and it would be, so, uh, and it would be much higher for North Dakota, for example. And what I mean by that is probably if I just looked at New York, it might be one death for every 1,000 people. Since I didn't look, I'm not going to say anything other than numbers can be manipulated and then can, they can lie. Let's take a look at California. That's where I'm from. The number of deaths in California from COVID is 3,209. The population of California is 37,253,956. Again, if you divide the number of deaths by the population, you get a ratio of 1 to 10,000. So that means for every 10,000 people, there is one death. So think about this. You've been locked in your own house. You have had to close your business, lose your job, and take a look, please, at the ratio of deaths to number of people. One death for every 10,000 people. Let's take a look at Orange County. In Orange County, the total number of deaths is 42. The population is 3,179,950. The ratio of deaths to people in the county is 1 to 75,000. So for every 75,000 people that live in Orange County, there is one death for COVID-19. So think about it. Again, everybody's been in their homes for the past six weeks. Children have not been allowed to be in school. And I think this is good news. One death for every 75,000 people. Now, now that we've looked at the good news, I want to make some requests for our politicians, for our leaders. You say that you feel our pain. Fine, I would like to believe you. So, why don't you, for as long as you keep us locked down, not accept one more penny of pay? In other words, all the money that you earn, give it to your favorite charity. As a matter of fact, do this retroactive. We've been locked down for the past six weeks. We had no jobs, no money for the past six weeks. Go back six weeks, take all the money that you earned and give it away. And the same should be true, not just for the governor, governor, the senator, the congressman. How about TV personalities? They say that they feel our pain too. Fine. You make six-figure salaries. You enjoy those. You tell us stay in place, suffer, this is for the benefit of the society, why should we suffer and you enjoy the benefits? So how about you renounce your salaries too, from now until the lockdown is over? I would also like to address the way the news is presented. You give us information. What is the information that we find out from you today? This is the only information that we learn from you today. You are telling us, there are 2,000 new deaths in the United States. You tell us the total number of deaths. That's all. But you don't give any details. How about you give the deaths? 
in terms of ages, like they do it on the CDC website. Like, for example, you could tell us how many people under the age of one have died. How about between one and four? How about between five and 14? And so on. It would be quite great to know exactly the number of people that die of the COVID. Who faces the, uh, the, the uh, greatest hardship? Who uh, is in danger of dying? Because you make it sound that any of us, as soon as we go outside our house, we're going to just fall down and die of this virus. The other thing is you only present the benefit. You talk the benefits of lockdowns. How about you talk about to, to economists? Because we like to know the damage done to our economy. We like to know when are we going to reopen. We would like to know uh, because the the government had to borrow so much money, what's going to happen to the value of our currency? Those are all questions that you could address and you could ask. You could also talk to psychologists because I'm curious to know what is the effect on people that have lost their job? How many of them have turned to alcohol, to drugs, to abuse, to abusing their children and their spouses? You always tout the benefits of this policy. Are there any costs? And if there are, why is it that you don't inform us? Finally, what I like to know is, of the total number of deaths that you present every day, did the people that died of the, of the coronavirus had other complications. Like, it would be nice to know if out of 2,000 people, uh, how many of them had heart problems, lung problems? How many of them had cancer? I also would like to know what would their have, uh, life expectancy been had they not died of the virus. For example, if I'm somebody who suffers from cancer and I die of coronavirus, but I would have died from cancer three months from now anyway, why don't you let me know of all that information? So please, don't just present the deaths. That means absolutely nothing except to scare people that are not familiar with the population of America or how to figure out a percentage for, for themselves. The last thing that I want to point out is to mathematicians. You know that math is the queen of all sciences. But you don't speak out. You don't say anything about the models that were presented to us. And I'd like to know why not. The first model that was given to us predicted 2 million deaths in America. It was totally wrong. We've never told why it was wrong. Nobody comes and apologizes for, for the fear that they instill in the population. Nothing at all. So why don't mathematicians start looking at models, at raw data, and how about you come up with statistics and you present it to us? Because mathematicians are known for liking numbers. So no much emotion. Look at the numbers and present the facts. And that's it. That's the end of my rant.